Hello everyone, welcome to the secrets of the Atma Karaka. The planet having the highest degree in your chart contains a purpose, the reason for your being here in this life. It's your very soul destiny. So it's very important to understand and to calculate this correctly and to understand the real implications because there is actually quite a bit of confusion about what the Atma Karaka really represents. I hope to dispel this on this video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe below give the video a thumbs up if it's good for you let's begin first of all everyone we have to understand the meaning of the word atma karaka there's a little bit of confusion the word atma means spiritual being soul who you are we are all spiritual beings inhabiting material bodies as are all creatures and karaka means significator of representing so the atma karaka is a significator of you of who you are of your soul but it's not truly who you are. It's more the karmas which are covering your soul. Now, people find it confusing because the sun represents the soul in astrology. So what does the sun represent if the Atmakarika is the significator of your soul? This is how it goes. The sun is the pure spiritual self who you are unadulterated so if you want to find your soul purpose in life you should look to the sun and surya lagna to find that but the atma karaka is the karmas the most intense karmas covering your soul so it's not your soul purpose it's the darkness in a way that is covering your soul it's the most intense karmas in your chart so these are the papa or sinful karmas covering all of us and bringing us into this world. I have to use that word sin. I can't use any other to translate the word papa. So the greatest darkness, depending on the degree of the planet. So your makarika might be only 23 degrees. It could be any planet and somebody else is 29. The more the degree goes up, the more karma to burn. I've already talked about this in a previous video on my channel, everybody, when I spoke about how the degree of the planet will impact Mahadasha. Check below, I will link it there for you and at the end. Now the issue around the Atmakarika calculation though is that some systems say use seven and some say use eight Charakarikas. The difference is that Rahu is left out sometimes and included in others. I now use a system including Rahu and I can tell you it's made all the difference to predictions and to understanding people's karma. I can't imagine how I ever got by without including Rahu. So why include Rahu? Pandit Sanjay Rath has explained this actually very conclusively and beautifully. The soul that is who we are who we are as a spiritual being, a little slither of light, so tiny it cannot be seen by material senses. But that slither of light residing in the heart chakra in your heart and in all living beings is actually surrounded by seven colors. But there is an eighth color as well that is not a color, that is the black color. Think of it of the black holes of the universe if you like, but that is Rahu. And the question might arise, well, what about K2? Cannot we look at K2 as well? And surely how can we use Rahu because K2 is there? The first thing is Rahu and K2 are not separate from each other. They are one being, Svabhanu, who actually was decapitated by Lord Vishnu. Check out the story of the churning of the ocean of milk so you can really understand Rahu, K2, who they are. I've included it on my Rahu and K2 Mahadasha videos if you care to look at those. So we must include Rahu. Otherwise, we are not getting a true cosmic understanding of our karmas. Of course, the other very clear reason why Ketu is not included as a Charakarika is that Ketu is taking us to liberation. He is the Moksha Karika. So therefore, he already has his own purpose and it is not to do with our karmas in this world. So here are the eight karakas, of course, with the Atma Karaka being the utmost. The highest degree planet in your chart becomes the Atma Karaka, and the lowest degree planet is the Dara Karaka or spouse. Regardless of any sign or any house, just the degrees. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So, Atma Karaka, as I say, are the karmas covering your soul. Amatya Karaka is your career indication. Batri Karaka knowledge, Matri Karaka mother, Pitra Karaka father, 
Putra Karika children, Jana Karika societies which you are part of professionally, and Dara Karika spouse. Important to understand though, these Chara Karikas are not the people involved. That's a misunderstanding. For example, Dara Karika is not your spouse. Spouse is Venus in the male chart, Jupiter female. No, Dara Karika is definitely going to be how you relate to your spouse and those karmas. Amatra Karika, how you progress in your career. Pitra Karika, how you relate to your father, not your father himself. So you have to see them in this way. Very important to see how to calculate with Rahu, however, there's a different calculation. I'm using Boris Johnson's chart as an example. His Apmakarika is Mercury, as you can see. Looking at all the planets in the chart, doesn't matter what sign or house, Mercury has the topmost degree, 25. But the next one down, which would be the Amatri Karika, there's a choice actually between Rahu and Jupiter. You would need to look at the minutes involved to get that calculation. So why is it happening? Rahu looks like a very low degree, eight Gemini. But when you are calculating Rahu, you have to remember he's moving backwards. So Rahu comes into the sign at 29 degrees here, and he leaves at zero degrees. So if he's got to eight degrees, he's actually come quite a way through the sign. So we have to calculate like that. What you do is you look at the degree of Rahu and you take it away from 30. And that can then make you decide is it high or low. So when we take 8 from 30, we get 22. So Boris Johnson has quite a high degree of karma with Rahu. Parashar has written a most important sloka in relation to the Atmakarika. This translation, by the way, comes from Visti Larson. Out of these karakas, the Atmakarika is the most important and has prime say on the native. Just as a king is chief among men in his country, is the head of all affairs and is entitled to bind one and to liberate one. I have emphasized the last part. It seems a mighty burden to put onto one planet, doesn't it? To bind you and to liberate you. But you see, we are responsible for these karmas. And until we have burnt them, oh, we can never be free. So let's just have a little more detail then. And a few more secrets about the karmas of the Apmakarika. So the karmas of the Atmakarika are definitely not easy. I've explained they are the greatest darkness in our chart. Pandit Sanjay Rath calls them the greatest pile of trash. If you think of it that way, it gives you a vivid idea of what you are dealing with. You have to burn these karmas and it won't be easy. Suffering, difficulty and a great deal of frustration in life come from the Atmakarika significations. But through all of this difficulty, there is definitely growth. There is soul growth possible, and no more so than when you have a malefic Atmakarika. Or when you have the sun, who is mildly malefic, Shani, Mars, Rahu as your Atmakarika, you will definitely go through the mill in life because the karmas are so intense. But here's the thing. You are actually quite a mature soul. It is said that those who have malefic Atmakarika are already spiritually advanced. So you will gain the most through these difficult circumstances. You will actually learn lessons which will make your forward journey spiritually so much better, so much closer to gaining final emancipation. Does it mean that the suffering of the other Apokarika planets is less acute? In some way it does. It can be difficult, but it doesn't quite touch you on that soul level. Or when you have the Moon, Venus and Jupiter Apokarika and Mercury also. To find out what deeds you perform behind the Atmakarika placement, there are three ways to do this. First of all, the Atmakarika sign position. Check the playlist on my channel, Ongoing, with the karmas of planets in all signs. That will give you definite indication. Secondly, the actual planet itself I'll be talking about in a minute. And thirdly, the placement of the Atmakarika in your D60 will give you very strong clues by sign, by house, and the aspects also. Let's have a closer look then at the karmas behind your Atmakarika planet. 
Sonas Ab Makarika shows past life indications of authority positions where you were accountable but also had power over others. And there may have been success, but misuse of power could sometimes be seen. So in this life, you have a great deal of pride in yourself. You find it hard to find any fault or to admit any fault in yourself worst case so difficulty being taught listening to authority figure is definitely the difficult life lessons with your father teachers gurus all who instruct you but it's a very simple and straightforward life lesson for you the lesson for the sum at makarika is to accept your own shortcomings accept that you're not perfect all knowing and that you actually do have some faults admitting these faults with humility is the great lesson here not to see faults as weakness you don't have to be perfect you don't have to be strong or all the time. When the moon is up, Makarika, the difficult past life karmas are all around emotions, mothering, and the curring nature. Now, I've seen real extremes in this. Generally, somebody with this moon at Makarika is extremely sensitive, extremely emotional, but the emotions get hidden so that even somebody really close to them finds that they shut off emotions very, very quickly. It's hard to find emotional balance, and that is the life lesson. Don't be too needy. Don't be too cold. Finding that middle ground and sharing equally with everyone in an unconditional way. Having that unconditional love for everyone. It's a high thing to attain for. But that is the karmic lesson of the moon at Makarika. And definitely there will be lessons with the mother. Very strong karmas with your mother are shown with this moon at Makarika, which you will have to face with a great deal of caring. With Mercury or Buddha as your Atma Karika, the past life karmas are all around use of speech. You may have caused hurt with your speech. You may have had misunderstandings, but they have caused difficulty. Particularly, they have involved younger people. And Mercury Atma Karika indicates that money matters become acutely karmic for you in this life. So the number one lesson is use your speech well. Again and again, you will find yourself being misunderstood in this life, getting a really bad bad feedback from things which you say and everything which you write. You have to go over it again and again to make sure that you are not causing offence. Very important to, as I say, watch money matters because these can easily get out of hand. The key lesson is be truthful, be honest and be kind in your speech and become a peacemaker in this life. When Venus is at Makarika, it's very clear that there were relationship issues past life, but mostly it's about the treatment of females. So whether you are male or female now makes no difference. You must be ethical towards women. Treat them well. Otherwise, you will find again and again women actually cause you problems. You must also be pure in relationships. You might have a tendency for casual sex, flings etc but these will just entangle you in so much more difficult karma you may have health issues you may have some issues with your looks as well that cause you some concern these are all again coming from these venus at makarika karmas you love music creativity artistic forms so much but again you have to use them in a completely ethical way when you have Mars up Makarika, the karmas are very clear. There can have been involvement in warfare, violence, danger, and competitiveness, which ended in not a good way. So definitely, the higher the degree of karma, the more this was there. So Mars up Makarika, you have to calm down the anger, the aggression. Now, you may not be openly violent, but you certainly like to argue, and this can cause you so much difficulty. Competitiveness, argument, anger, rage all of these things have to be controlled or they will really get you into very difficult karmic situations difficulty with sibling a big karma with your brothers is often seen with this apmakarika what is the most important lesson it is 
ahimsa. Ahimsa means non-violence. And actually, Mars Ahmakarika people are very aware of this subconsciously, I've seen. So you may not be in any way violent. In fact, you may be appalled by it. You may become vegetarian early on in life because of this sensitivity, which is a good thing. So watch your speech. Don't cause harm in your speech and obviously in your actions. This will calm down and help you to make great progress with this Ahmakarika. When Jupiter is your Apmakarika, there was a great deal of wisdom gained past life. But did you use it correctly? That could have been the problem. Challenges with gurus and teachers could have been quite extreme. In this lifetime, you like to teach others. I've seen many teachers with this Apmakarika. You like to teach, sometimes to preach even, but it can come back on you in a really difficult way. People don't like being instructed by you sometimes, and you're going to have to face difficult karmas with your knowledge. The difficult thing for Jupiter Apmakarika is, do you accept that you don't know everything about any subject? It's very difficult for you. You like to be seen as the expert and you truly just want to give knowledge to help others, but it isn't accepted well. That is normally seen. What's a karmic lesson? It's very clear. You have to be humble. You have to take a platform below your guru and your teachers. You have to be willing to learn more than you put out again. It's very important to take this humble position. You may have difficulties with children and in your own education with this Jupiter. So humility as a learner rather than pride as a teacher is most important with this Apmakarika. When Saturn is at Makarika, there are strong karmas past life connected to duty in the family and to do with being humble and serving others. So there are quite tough karmas with this Saturn in this life. It can put you apart from others. There can be a barrier between the self and others. You can feel lonely, disengaged sometimes. What it's about is though always doing your duty, never shirking. You will find yourself looking after family members maybe you will find that you are forced to do unpleasant tasks very often in this lifetime. So hard work and duty are the definite mantra for Saturn Apmakarika. But when you perform these gradually over the life, the barriers will be removed and you will find yourself less isolated, less lonely, more connected to others. You connect to others through your giving nature. You mustn't hide away. Saturn Apmakarika makes you want to separate, get away from everybody. But actually, you need to be in society serving. That is the whole karma involved here. When Rahu is at Makarika, just like Shani, the karmas are very intense, sometimes harsh. There can be many shocks in life because past life involved maybe unethical situations, manipulation, danger. But the great factor is that Rahu, just like Shani and Mars, gives tremendous spiritual development. You are ready for these lessons. You mightn't think you are, but you definitely are. So when you have this at Makarika, you will face many life lessons of do you cheat or do you go honest? Do you take the shortcut? You know the shortcut most definitely. Or do you go honest and open about all things? You will be tempted so many times to win over others. You enjoy that, but you will be not in good karmic situation if you do that. So Rahu will sometimes even go the opposite way I've seen. You can be naive, too trusting and find that you are manipulated. You are deceived by others. What do you have to do? You have to forgive. That's the most important karma here. In addition, dealing with people from foreign lands and cultures or going into these foreign lands yourself will be the most important karmic lessons because that is where you will meet these Apmakarika karmas, as I've just discussed. There can be many sudden breaks, many shocks in life with this Rahu Apmakarika, but staying on the ethical side and staying pure at all times, as I've just said, the most tremendous spiritual development and progress is possible because K2 is the other the side of Rahu. Although he is not Apmakarika, dealing with these Rahu karmas can take you closer to that liberation. 
next to the house of your app mechanical which is literally like a burning building here this scary image you might have wondered why it was on the thumbnail actually because the house of the app mechanical is literally burning down in some way so this image was actually given to me by visti larson and i think he's completely correct the app mechanical house is where your attention goes just like if there is a house of flame on the road where you are it's a really good metaphor. Can you think of anything else but that house? You have to save the house. You have to deal with it. But what's really happening, I've seen, is that you don't want to move. The house is burning down, but you want to keep things stable in that area of life. The house where the apmacarica is just drains you of every ounce of your energy because the karmas are so intense. So an out of control fire is very much what it's like dealing with that house. You're trying to put your energy into control things to save all that can be saved in that area. But very often, sometimes you just have to let go. And that's the hardest lesson for the house where the atmakarika is. You see, there is enormous attachment to this area of life, and that is why it becomes so difficult for you, so all-engrossing. Let's go through the different house placements. You can read this, actually, from your D1 and your D9 chart. I have found that this will work in both cases. Of course, the actual Apmakarika in your D9 is known as Karakamsa, which will become the subject of my next video. But let's begin with the houses of the Apmakarika. Apmakarika has gone into the first house in your chart. This is such a powerful position. This is the king of the chart going into the first house of the chart. So it gives prominence to you. You get a great deal of power in some situation in your life. You have authority over others again. This can be anything from being the manager of a corner shop to being the CEO of a huge business company. Whatever it is, in some small way, you become prominent, you become a leader, and sometimes if it is negative, it can go to your head. You have to be careful of other people. It is opposing the seventh house. So a great deal of power is given to you if you have this apmacaric. But as I say, this is the house on fire, so you have to be careful to not misuse the power. Apmakarika's second house. Your family becomes all important to you. There are so many karmas connected to your family. You're trying to hold it all together with them and your wealth becomes quite extreme karmas here. And you're always putting so much effort into managing both wealth and and family affairs actually that there's a little time for yourself but you want to do it you want to give this energy some form of balance has to happen in your life this is a house of speech of course no matter what the abmakarika watching what you say to others will help you because many difficult situations will come your way and the house of food as well sometimes food can be a difficulty for you weight gain etc or it can be just that you get into extreme diets etc in some way as I've said, there has to be moderation in all things of the second house when the Apmakarika is here. Apmakarika third house. The third house is about weapons, protection, protecting yourself, using your skill to protect yourself in life. You're always on the edge, always having to fend off enemies, conflicts, competitors with this Apmakarika third house. In addition, karmas with your siblings, co-borns, can go to the extreme here. There can be situations beyond the pale for you or which you have to deal with. And again, it's all to do with paying back a past debt which is there for these individuals in your life. Fourth house of Macarica, extreme attachment to your place of birth, country and mother and strong karmas with each of these. You have to not try to control things so much. You go to extremes to keep things together domestically, but they keep on simply falling apart. Apmakarika shows that great sensitivity around the mother relationship is necessary when it's in the fourth house. Apmakarika fifth house teaching itself and education can become a great focus in your life many changes and demands can be made on you there that you have to deal with very often it's a child who becomes a complete focus of your life strong karmas also 
the sixth house at Makarika. It's all about competition and conflicts. All of your life seems to be an endless competition with others. Battles are happening all the time. Sometimes you almost enjoy it, but the karmas are really intense. Learning to let go, learning to just walk away is a strong karmic lesson. There can be health issues also. Seventh house up Makarika, difficult relationship situations, but you're trying to control them. You could stay in a really difficult marriage with this, refusing to leave, refusing to let go. You've got to be honest about yourself in relationships. What is working for you? What is not? And the duty factor is important also. So you're torn apart basically by relationships because a relationship and being in one is so important to you. When the Abmakarika is in the eighth house of your chart, there are extremes of circumstances in your life. Your life can undergo complete metamorphosis more than once. And it can be beneficial, but it will be traumatic sometimes. You have to learn to let go. No Abmakarika position has to let go as much as when the eighth house is literally burning down. But the good news is that you will transform yourself into something better by going through these most extreme circumstances. There can be loss of legacy, wills, anything to do with business and family affairs can involve a great loss at some time. Ab McCulloch placed in the ninth house of your chart. Relationship with your father is of absolute paramount importance to you. Your father becomes a guru, a very important person to you, a person who absolutely guides your life in some way. It cannot be avoided. If there is, if there is ill aspect, though, to this Ab McCulloch, there can be even separation and loss of father, and you will feel it very, very acutely. Abmakarik here takes you into foreign land to fulfill your karma and your education, higher education, becomes absolutely important to you. The karmas are so strong with foreign lands with this Abmakarika that you can actually learn other languages and become fluent because often you gain a new nationality also. That can sometimes be seen. When the Atmakarika goes to the 10th house of your chart, the karmas are strong with what you do in this life. You can get great attainment, great position with this Atmakarika, but it can come tumbling down if you are not working with that planet, as I've spoken about ethically on this video. This Atmakarika means that nothing means more to you than your status in life. Your status is everything. You want to be somebody, do something. You don't want to waste your life. You don't want to waste your time. You put so much effort into your career, but very often it can be almost too much effort. So it's a balance in your life. But definitely the karmas are coming back to you in this career house. And you cannot control everything. When the unexpected happens, you need to let go in this career area. Abakarika in the house of gains means that you want so much from life and you put effort into getting from life. But Abakarika lesson of the 11th house is to give. If you do not give equally to what you gain, there can be great disappointment and difficulties and strong karmas with your friends as well. Friends can disappear, let you down, cause you heartache, cause you great difficulty. Again, it's about letting go with these karmas. When the Atmakarika is in the 12th house, the most important thing for you is your freedom. You want to feel free and unrestrained. You can have long distance relationships, difficulty staying close to your spouse because your freedom and your personal autonomy independence is so important to you. It's a good place for the Atmakarika because spirituality becomes really strong and you can gain enormous spiritual wisdom in this life. Foreign lands, of course, may draw you in, but they may not always give you satisfaction you would like. Finally, the Apmakarika Mahadasha is definitely going to challenge you. Everybody has a general idea that the Apmakarika Dasha will give challenging situations, but don't forget it will also give you success. You'll be pushed to the brink in the Apmakarika Dasha. You won't believe or what you have to face, but also what great strides you can make. So expect to be challenged, expect to be pushed. Often the biggest lesson of our life and the most important victories can be 
in the Atmakara Kadasha. Let's have an example of this. So here is Boris Johnson, UK Prime Minister Karika Lagna. We put his Atmakarika Mercury in the first house of the chart and we just put all the other planets following on as they are in the birth chart. And we have a new chart. This Karika Lagna shows how he will fulfill these Atmakarika karmas. But now he's under the Dasha itself, it will show us exactly what's happening during this time. And it's a very clear picture, isn't it? Mercury, of course, indicates the karmas Boris Johnson has. He has to watch his speech. He gets misunderstood. And my goodness me, during this time, how many U-turns can you do in a few years? I think Boris Johnson has done so many people have stopped counting. Mercury is superb at turning around and going the opposite way with no qualms at all. Of course, his career prominence and success clearly shown by Saturn in own sign Aquarius retrograde and the Yoga Karika from Taurus showing the attainment of greatness. Actually, Saturn here becomes in a Raj Yoga because he is ninth and tenth lord. Ninth lord in the tenth house is Raj Yoga. So he's got the position as prime minister but it's caused difficulty saturn third aspect on the 12th house foreign lands problems brexit and of course aspecting jupiter expenses are going out of the window with coronavirus for the whole country and i believe he has a great deal of personal financial problems saturn aspecting fourth and seventh house he's had domestic upheaval and remarriage in addition mars ruling the partner or the spouse has gone into the first house with his atmakarika showing a lot of contention a very fiery relationship i would imagine though we may not see that and actually a great deep karma because mercury is atmakarika mars being with mercury now showing spouse shows a very deep karma karma here which has to be fulfilled moon in the six is a very changeable health aspect an aspect in jupiter in the 12th can show hospitalization and of course he was in hospital with coronavirus but moon jupiter is a good yoga and he overcame that problem but don't forget that the moon will always give a changeable health factor during this mercury mahadasha for boris johnson so you can judge your own Mahadasha of your Atmakarika in the same way, very simply like this. But this Karika Lagna, this special chart with the Atmakarika in the first house, is more than just Mahadasha. It contains the karmas of the Atmakarika. And how to read it is a little bit more complicated than simply reading it as a birth chart. So that will be the subject of my next video. Watch out then for part two of the series with the Karika Lagna Karmas. There are special techniques to read them. I will show you how. And the Atma Karika in your D9, known as the Karakamsa. All the secrets are there. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Goodbye for now and God bless everyone.